Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now don't forget, if you like what you see and want to see me build more cool things in Minecraft, more massive projects of things that you know and love, hit like and favorite right now. Last episode, we terraformed out a nice large area and we plonked down the foundations for the center part of the castle. And this episode, we're coming back to the towers around the edge of the main castle. Now we have the central towers, the ones that lead into the canal that goes inside the castle, and we have the outer corner towers. But what I need to do now is link up those towers with a wall similar to what's represented in the movies in the main Disney castle. And when you look at the front tower, when you look at the front towers and the front walls, you'll notice that it's got like kind of like a blue roof over it, which is great. It works fantastic with our new nether brick texture. And it's got these kind of like gray crenellations, which is what we're doing here now. But also what the wall has is a small kind of turret tower right in the middle of itself. Now I'm using black wool as a way to hide the fact that there's empty windows. And now it's time to come back with stone brick and start building that kind of half tower that links itself to the outside walls. And again, this wall is something that I can repeat directly over to the other side of the build. So once I was happy with whatever I have here, I could literally copy and paste it right over to the other side. And that's such a useful thing to be able to do. Now, it took me a long time to get it exactly right, exactly how I wanted it. And then you see me here measuring out and copy and pasting so it's identical on the other side of the wall. Looking pretty good so far. And I've also used stone slabs because luckily in this texture pack, and to remind you again, the texture pack we're using is Halcyon Days. But in this texture pack, the stone slabs look enough like the stone brick for it to work in conjunction with it. And right, I now simply took the one section of wall and copy and pasted it along all the way to the other tower and then trimmed it up where it didn't quite fit. Cleaning up all the odds and ends left by copy and pasting because when you do copy and paste, a lot of the time what you're copying is a bit too big or a bit too small to go where you're pasting it. So you have to go in after the fact and trim up a bit of the after effects, a bit of the artifacts left over from pasting. And now I could literally take the whole front section of that wall, that's all four towers, and then paste that over at the back of the castle. And now it's time to link up the outside towers. Now I'm using the same kind of wall, but because the wall along the side doesn't have the half tower that we've built there, I took it section by section and just pasted along bit by bit. Now what these outside walls do have is a large tower right in the middle that connects to the main castle. If you remember the intros to movies that you've seen with the Disney castle, I think some people call it Cinderella's castle, and yeah, we might as well, that works for us. But what it has is two long roads along bridges that connect to the sides of the castle. And that's always been strange. It's always been something that I thought is quite odd about the Disney castle. The fact that the front entrance, the main grand entrance, connects by water. But to get to the castle by land, you have to approach from either the left or the right. It's a bit odd, but we're going to still cater for that. And we're going to put in a tower here, which is going to link us up to the road. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. There isn't enough space, really, between the wall and the edge of the area we cleared out to put an extra bridge. So much later in the build, I will be coming back and doing even more terraforming to give us a lot more space. Now, hopefully I haven't built this thing too close to other things I've already built. Otherwise, I might have to move the whole thing. But that's something to worry about later. For the time being, I just wanted to get this tower built, this side tower. And if you look in pictures, it kind of leans up subtly behind the front towers. Now, again, a great, great trick for designing these towers is you only really need to build a quarter of the tower, roof included. And then you can literally take that quarter and copy and paste it around three more times to get the complete symmetrical effect. So you can see once I was happy with what I had, that's exactly what I did. And we have our completed towers. 
and we have our completed tower. But it's not quite complete. We still need to add a little bit of detail because without chiseling away at the top and the bottom, what you get is this very flat, very straight effect. It's just too much like a cylinder. It needs to look like a tower, not a cylinder. And the best way to do that is just to trim away at the edges here like, like you see me doing here. And mixing and matching with different textures and different blocks to make it look a bit more original and fresh. And now again, I could literally copy that side and paste it all the way over here. There's plenty of space, but also it does. there's not really quite enough space to put in the bridge or the road. So I will have to come back and terraform away even more space, including out the front of the castle, which is approached by water. There's not going to be enough room to add a big enough lake there, and I want a nice big lake to lean in towards the front of the castle. And now it's time to start building that grand entrance to the Disney castle. Now I'm using etched stone brick, which in this texture pack looks kind of like stone brick pillars. And then bracing the sides of the wall there with wooden logs. And then once the arch was completed, I built up with more stone brick and began to craft the windowsill and window section just outside the front entrance. Now, I was really looking forward to getting to design this because it's a very intricate window system. And it was a lot of fun to build. But one of the unique things about the front windows of the Disney castle is that it's made up of squares, the window, and not all squares are lit up. So I had to find out a way to get certain squares of glass to light up and others to not. And in the end, the uh, the way I did that, the method I had for getting that effect was really quite simple and obvious, to be honest. Now I put wooden logs in here in the middle to brace the center of the windows and split them up. And I put these blue stained glass windows in here. What I'm gonna be using for most of the build is orange stained glass to represent the deep yellow glow. But for the front entrance, this has a couple of windows that are kind of bluey in tint and hue. Now I'm using quartz blocks here, but in this texture pack, they look kind of like paneled marble in, in a lot of ways, kind of like a white kind of marble braced with wooden kind of wooden supports. And of course, the etched quartz has even more wooden bracings, so it's just a great block to add more detail into your builds. I'm also using fences here, iron fences, to add a bit more texture and depth. And then I stretched out towards the main castle with the top of the stone brick, which would become the blue roof. And here you can see now, what I did to get this effect, to get certain squares to light up is, I only put glowstone behind certain blocks and other blocks I didn't put any glowstone behind. And you can see you get that really cool effect that lights up just a few panels and leaves the rest with like a dim glow. And now it was time to convert that stone brick at the back to the blue nether brick and nether brick steps. And it feels like this kind of blue on the rooftops is a very kind of iconic Disney thing. I've built so many Disney projects where they've had this kind of tinted, colored roofing. When you look at the Tangled Tower, that had kind of like a light purple tower. Arendelle, of course, the Frozen build, that castle also had the blue rooftops. And the Disney castle is no different. It's got this same kind of shade of blue for all of the roofs. And I won't complain, it's a really nice blue. Now having the front roof section here take shape was a really exciting part of the build. It really meant that the, the build was starting to take shape and I could get a real sense of scale and how the building was supposed to add up in terms of numbers and size in my head. But a few things were still wrong and I had to come back here and trim down these towers that I built originally and then build up with these squares the central main keep. 
Now I boarded the corners with etched sandstone, which is like sandstone pillars. But I did feel that this whole building, this whole keep section, was perhaps a bit big. It was a bit thick, a bit wide, a bit chunky. So I had to find a way to shrink it down. But only after I'd gilded the top and decorated. So using black wool, I cut the whole section, the whole building, into quarters. And then it was just a case of cutting and pasting those slowly inside, so I shrunk the whole structure by about two or three blocks. And this kind of thing isn't easy to do. When you initially do this, it's very easy to kind of overlap and make mistakes and get things not symmetrical or break things that weren't broken before. But luckily we managed to finish this and get everything looking okay. Now with the main keep loosely done, I haven't done most of the detail on it, but for the most part I just wanted to build the framework for the main castle so that I could get a sense of proportion and scale and make sure everything was built to the right size. And now I came around to my probably my favourite tower of the whole build is this tower on the left of the castle that reaches up not quite as high as the main tower but it's got a really cool arched bridge that leans over and connects it to the main tower. Now again, sandstone and the etched sandstone were really great tools for bordering and gilding the tips, the edges and rooftops of these keeps. I wasn't sure initially because I hate sandstone. I really hate sandstone as a material. I think it's ugly compared to stone brick, but I don't like using too much stone brick because there can be too much of a good thing, especially in the case of stone brick. So this isn't the finished tower. This is me loosely putting in the rooftop and the stone brick. I will be coming back to add windows and detail to this tower, but for the time being, I wanted to leave it as it is and come back to it later to finish it off. But I did build the spire in the middle so that I could get a feel of how tall it had to be in relation to the other main towers. And I achieved the spire effect on this very top of this roof using stone brick steps and I think stone slabs. Now it was time to build this stone tower just to the left of the castle. It's a pretty simple cylinder made out of stone brick. And then using the awesome, awesome builder's wand from Extra Utilities, I built up some cylinders even taller. Now this, this is a two-tier tower. The bottom tier has that kind of like a roof canopy that connects to the middle tower that stretches up even further. But again, I didn't want to finish this yet. I just needed to get the loose template for it ironed down in my mind so that I could come back later and add detail. But that's about all we're going to do for this episode. We've made some really heavy progress though. The entire outer walls and towers are pretty much complete. We detailed and decorated the front of the keep. It's looking really amazing. And of course, the main two towers, the, the central keep and the left keep, are in place and set to the right scale that they need, they need to be set to as well. So that's been it for this episode of Let's Build Disney Castle. Hit like and favorite and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Let's Build. Take care.